Ready? As ready as you allowed me to be. <laughs> but you didn't have the book. No shit. But in the last episode, you're like, oh, I'm going to give Nicole the book. I'll She'll give her, be prepared. I gave her a lot of time to prepare. Mm-hmm. What she did with that time. It's up to her. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 55 of The Real Word. The word is up. The word is up. I the word is up. You just like to. All right, so we we teased it last episode. If you didn't see last episode, by the way, Suave is, has convinced me the mics are working this episode, episode 55. They were not in 54. You can go check back on 54. <laughs> Suave had to make a PSA at the beginning of that uh, episode, but they should like be working now. You just talk. You wanted to override. Override? I yeah, I saw the episode. One of the few. Oh, I did override yeah. <laughs> in the beginning. I made it clear that I sound a lot better with a professional mic than I do mm-hmm. with that one. Mm-hmm. All right, so we teased up uh, the Swanapol Trends Report 2019. It's out. We said we'd pick something super interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff here, but I was drawn to trend number seven, the digital end-to-end real estate transaction dream because I've certainly talked a lot about you know, certain pockets of the, uh, of the entire industry being you know, really uh, technology-driven, right? Mm-hmm. Like, automated that, that's the right. word I'm looking for automated certainly in the transaction side of the business I think there's a lot um, to be automated I've mm-hmm. been you know Bank of America I know is working on on ways to take the closing down from four to six weeks to, to two weeks and and I really really believe all that is coming so I was just drawn to this trend and I'm mm-hmm. like I've got to dig into this and really see what they're what they're talking about right at the top though it says closer than ever but still far away. The standard residential real estate transaction involves hundreds of detailed financial requirements, legal contracts, and many other real estate forms involving dozens of documents and multiple parties. And and the parties that are included are appraisers, uh, title examiners, home inspectors, pest inspection personnel, surveyors, engineers, buyers, sellers, agents, loan officers, underwriters, attorneys, closing staff and more that right there is a snapshot of how daunting the actual transaction is and and we do it every day so Mm -hmm. i think we're just kind of numb to it but when you think about not only how many people are involved but how many of these people how many of these players in Mm -hmm. the in the transaction have their own thing Mm -hmm. their own program their own software that they're using to get the transaction done and they and they're flying a lot of them are doing hundreds of transactions a year so to learn Nicole, the, Nicole's way of doing the transaction mm-hmm. mid transaction meh okay Nicole you send it over on DocuSign cool I'm gonna put it over into dot loop on my end and this is more agent to agent right, right. I, I don't really have time to learn DocuSign I'm, I gotta keep moving right. I'm just gonna put it into now there's really two dot loop they call it loop what do they call it in DocuSign is it a loop is it a the transaction, whatever it is, the file. I don't, I don't loop. No, I said DocuSign. What do they call yeah. them? DocuSign. I d- again, I don't ever, do- I don't ever loop anybody in. I just DocuSign it. You, you just sign it. You're just using it for that I'm one just tool. Using it as a but I'm sure there's a file, a transaction, a loop, or whatever Maybe. it's called, right? So basically, in that scenario, Nicole would have her own loop for the transaction with mm-hmm. her people. Mm-hmm. Maybe the buyer, or the seller agent, whichever side you know she wasn't on, is has it in dot loop, and everybody's living in a loop. So those are two worlds that aren't speaking to each other. I mean, that's one small example uh, of the of how hard it is for the real estate transaction to be digital. Yeah. From and what do they say? The vision is for a digital contact to contract to close relationship (laughs) uh, or real estate platform. That's been the industry vision since the early '80s when Sears attempted to. Bring for full service transaction by mm-hmm. owning Dean Witter Financial Services, Allstate, and Coldwell Banker. Mm-hmm. Right, like there's just a lot of there's moving s- parts. Yeah, well, then each, it, it, but then each company has their own like integration, and then 
each each team has their own way of doing it and i mean whew. stefan says the most powerful real estate dream of the last 25 years still has not reached reality long live one-stop shopping one-stop shopping would be you know that buyer being able to find the house say mm -hmm. it online right wherever online and go immediately into finding out if they are approved, approved right. qualified mm -hmm. for that home seeing the home uh potentially putting a purchase and sale contract on the home and then starting that entire process all within the same place the communication with whoever approved them of that loan the communication with their agent the communication with the pest uh in insect people the inspection people mm -hmm the septic people, like mm -hmm. all these different people all in the same place. Imagine getting a, a septic inspector into your your world, your transaction world. I mean, they don't even have like, <laughs> some of them don't even have Facebook pages or websites, let alone. And, that, and that's probably gonna fall on the <laughs> on the role of the agent to loop, not loop them in, but, but input just, whatever they but to But to loop it in. Yeah, yeah to like get the documents like their documents in. in. Yeah. Although, I mean, there's still like some of that stuff kind of um, makes me a little scared too. I know that we have those discussions sometimes even within our team and I'm sort of going on like a little bit of a side tangent. Um, even when it comes to like inspectors, like I like to be a little bit more hands off because I don't ever want to be held responsible because right. like I schedule the inspection and not the buyer. Right. So I wonder if there would be sort of some of that, you know, if, if only some people are are doing that type of platform is that steering the buyer to use those you know what i mean like it's i mean it, it's all very it's all very interesting and obviously why no one's you really know what, come to a you solid know what, what was interesting is and i don't know how many have, have really dug deep into it but um this organization here uh it's not reso it is mm, rest pro right so the nonprofit Real Estate Service Providers Council, respro.org, is working to unify all these industries. This is basically another trade association, mm -hmm. right? A and what they're saying are. is, you know, you could have all of this, you know, so the, the mortgage and the title insurance and the escrow and the settlement services all flow. But to your point, is that steering the business into one person is there going to be choice there I, I, there has to be there has to be choice uh, some type of choice i would imagine and people plugging into the same system the challenge is 100 percent, like getting everybody 100 percent to do yeah. everything the well, same it's sort, of, it's sort of like the attorneys remember i think it was maybe three years ago when there were all those new laws the amount of attorneys that were just dabbling in real estate especially i mean right. I, I, we should say more I, I can only speak to connecticut because obviously it's a little different in each region but the amount of real estate or the amount of um attorneys that just dabbled like they would help but, their friend or their like they pretty much pulled completely out because of all the new right. rules that they had to follow and so that type of regulation right. basically really did get a lot of people to leave the business it really did uh but or at it, least not dabble anymore but it did get a lot of the attorneys here in connecticut anyway to follow the same process for sure i mean right. it, it cost them lots of money yeah i mean they were they definitely had to invest in their business for for that so here's interesting um little nugget lack of integration even if data standards were fully complete across real estate mortgage title and settl settlement each industry has its own variety of platforms which is what we've been saying mm -hmm. and they do not seamlessly integrate and that's the that that right there is the punchline. So does not mean that this won't happen someday. And it certainly doesn't mean that each one of these these platforms that are working don't continue to chew up pieces of the transaction. Right. Right. It doesn't mean that. I mean, if dot loop or sky slope or DocuSign does something really crazy to pull away from the pact then the other two could lose users. Maybe they get bought out by the one leader there and then they are the go-to place for the transaction management and it becomes the standard, but that's still only one piece yeah. of everything we're talking about. Yeah. So I think over time, I think we're just in a um, time frame right now 
where we're getting all the pieces figured out. Oh, for sure. We're, I mean, we're strides ahead. I mean, the fact oh that mortgage God. companies allow you to just even sign digitally now is like wildly different from just even five years ago where like you still had to fax shit and like mail shit and like what I think you'll end up. It. I mean, what, what I think you'll end up seeing, though, is you'll end up seeing a few major banks that take up the majority. I mean, the big, big this. What's happening right now with technology is leaning more towards the big companies more than ever before. It's why Amazon is so powerful because, and it's gonna happen, people hate to hear that, but the big companies that do this stuff right are going to really take up more market share in whatever industry they're in. And I think yeah. in the real estate transaction, when you see a few big banks seamlessly make the mortgage process quicker, faster Ooh, it's like that one they'll company. be in the in the platform what's that company that's all digital why am i blinking on it right now it's because we're sitting here asking i feel like they call me company or is no, it no, no no it's mortgage rocket um no no the other one rocket mortgage no. no they always are calling i feel like every week and i don't even have the buyer i am I'm, I'm like the seller and they're like hey just wanted to well, i know like rocket does that quicken loans quicken thank you well, that's, quicken. Um, isn't that, quicken owns rocket oh okay yeah i think so well it's so i i like that's fun like i feel like i feel like i feel like they're just my secretary at this point like right. they <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I think we're a long to Stefan's point. We're a long way away from there being one standard of how everybody does contact to close, but the pieces in between are certainly getting bigger, more powerful, more robust. And you have to pay attention to that because if there's better service for the consumer, they're gonna they're gonna lean in that direction, 100%. right? And if somebody has all those kind of pieces figured out. They're fragmented still, but they've got it. They're going to get more of, of the business. So you got to pay attention to it. All right. Instead of doing a whole bunch of rackets, we're going to run down one topic here, which is a Forbes article that just came out. And so for all of our seasoned agents, this will be really fun. It'll be fun. Thirteen real estate pros share what they wish they knew as newbies. So we're going to go through all 13. We're going to give our two cents on if these are rackets or not. not. And, and and I'd love to like rank them also in importance. I would love to rank them because it's saying, what, I'm sorry, what was the the header again said? Wish, wish they knew. Okay, yeah. I, they I think wish it, they knew think coming in. Coming in. Because I think some of these things, yeah, maybe I didn't need to know it coming in, but. Right. So let's take it from that context. Okay. Do you absolutely need to know this number from one. coming in? Coming in. I mean, I got my own thoughts of what you need to know coming in. But number one, work on your business, not in your business. So explain that. So, and, and Pamela from Goodwin Commercial, she, in her words, says, it's surprising how much time you can spend working in your business. Mm -hmm. In your business, building the website, paying the bills. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the key is to delegate everything someone else could mm -hmm. be doing. If you're making copies, you could pay someone $10 to do the work, hire someone to do that work. Your time is much better spent making the activities for your business. Learn to work on your business, not in your business. All right, you totally don't find that as a racket. That is definitely not a racket. No. And I even think from day one, and I, I think if you're a new agent day one, the way to handle this is to join a, a, a business, right? Join a mega team that can show you how to what she's referring to get deals done right not right. a racket no oh, okay what do you think yeah i mean i um i agree i agree i mean i think that there's something you'll just be out of business if you pay attention to building your website as a new agent i hear you oh i, w I mean i wouldn't even know how to unless you're that unless you're a developer website developer. right i mean for sure i just i don't even know how to start a website um i think that there's some things though that and I, ho I don't mean to like maybe skip to others, but I think there's some things in your business that like you can eventually sort of push off, but that like I'm glad that I kind of went through it because I like. And, and, and the, you don't want to be a complete moron the flip when it side comes of this, to the actual business either. The you know? flip side of this is like there are certain things you need to do. You need to have your Zillow profile filled out. Like you need to have well, a, yeah. a headshot. Like there are certain things you're going to have to do before For sure. you step one. Okay. Yeah. Number two, it's not as easy as it looks on TV. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is not a racket. Shouldn't even be watching these TV shows. I don't think that's number one going. Maybe it is. Maybe almost number one going. That really in. is like the most important. I feel like everybody comes in because they're just like, oh, I have free time now. Like a kid's at school. Well, they literally I'm like HGTV. People watch HGTV in the show where they bring the buyer around to th three different 
um, homes. homes and then you always know pick. which one they pick, though, because the house is vacant. And, like, it's never a situation where, like, you're just, like, taking the buyer after those three homes and sitting down for, like, a little pretzel bread and saying, Nicole. Pretzel pretzel and bread? Yeah, like hmm. a little pretzel bread. Pretzel bread. Pretzel bread. Bread? That's you know, just, pretzel. That's like a... That's like a meal you would, uh, or a little snack that you would have this conversation over, I feel like, you know, pretzel dipping bread. pretzel, mm-hmm. eating okay. it. <coughs> Nicole, like, which of those three houses are you going to make uh. an offer on and why, <laughs> right? Like, it's just so fake. Or if it was that easy, I mean. And buyers don't engage the way that they do on those shows. So just for everybody that maybe doesn't know, like, those HGTV shows are done after the fact. So yeah. the deal's done. Done. Then they go in reverse. Yeah. And they do the filming. So it's super fake. People had to have known that. Well, if not, we just let the cat out of the bag. This, totally is, this is like it's, like it's like the day I found out WWF was fake. Right. Ugh. We got a big holiday coming up. We could. I don't want to drop that because there's any kids. There's no kids watching the show. No, as far as, gosh, but let's not. But um, it's the same kind of thing, right? Like that is a fake show. It's drawn out, and the buyer's reaction in real life is much different. So if you're a new agent coming in, knowing your buyers are actually walking through the house saying. Oh, this house sucks. Like the photos are like totally not what I saw online. This does not look like the same house. Right. Well, that's how buyers are. It's so many other things though too. I mean, you have to be super knowledgeable in like flood, in septic, in well, in property lines. You don't hear any of those questions on TV because they're not interesting. No, or like I mean, like what's the flood zone? That's hey, if I want to add like a bay, or what's the setback on this property? Hey, does the town allow this? Is there like power lines coming in i mean not that but again i mean there you just you have to know even just like costs of things like right, hey the, what about this bathroom yeah the number three not a racket oh relationships matter Whew. i go into high schools and scream this at my top of my lungs guys mm-hmm. it's not what you know in life it's who you know but you don't need to be born knowing everybody you just need to go knock on the doors of the people that, that you want to know. But relationships is everything. I think that's the most important. And I mean, I, and I feel like we say that to our new agents all the time. They're always worried about what they don't know. I mean, there's so many things that I still don't know, but it is all about building the relationship and fostering a relationship or at least starting a relationship. I it's mean, everything. yeah, it really is. Number four, learn to love problem solving. Listen to the first sentence. This is from uh, Patrice at Open Listings. Being a real estate agent isn't about your looks or your taste in homes. Hmm. What's up with that? What is up with that? What is up with that? What is up with that? That's a racket. Nicole says she makes me look better. That's a total <laughs> racket. Um, but it, yeah, funny. you got to be a, you got to be a problem solver for sure. Or thinking outside the box. I mean, it's not always step one, step two, step three. Number five: Take the time to know what you don't know. I think that's a racket. That is a racket. Here's why. You are not going to know everything. Never. So take the not time to know what you don't know. You'll spend the next 30 years trying to figure out what you don't know. This is a total racket. Although it's interesting though, it says take two years to become a novice, become an assistant to a pro. I actually did that. No, so that's great advice. Yes. Like join a team, become an assistant. You're going to learn a lot more. But if you spend all your time in this business focusing on what you don't know, you're going to get nothing done. Nothing. Go all, all in on your strengths. Realize that when you come in to be a real estate agent, you are signing up to be a salesperson. Right. Okay. I know on HGTV, they make real estate agents seem like something not other than being a salesperson. You're a salesperson. So you should have some sales chops coming in and you should focus on that, on generating leads, uh, on setting appointments and all your time should be spent on that. And the stuff that you don't know, you should be joining a team to handle the marketing, uh, to handle making sure the transaction process goes well because it's, I mean, you're going to learn if you're in this business 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you're going to learn every day. Well, and it's right. And I always say it's better for you to say, I don't know. And I'll get the answer than like mumbling like an idiot. And then there goes your, you know, number six, total, not a racket. Keep your clients close. This is like number four relations or number three relationships matter. Like, right. yeah, I keep your clients close. Right. If you're not talking to them, somebody else is. Absolutely. Right. Number seven, you are your own best advocate. And I didn't really understand where hmm. she was coming from on this, but from she writes from day one, I realized that nobody was going to make sure I have a ton of leads. Oh, so making sure that yeah, it's that talking about yeah, full. like don't wait, like don't wait on your ma- like your your manager is not going to help you. That's actually something all newbies should understand is your mm-hmm. manager is never going to help you generate business. Never. Okay. You might have ever. like a book club with your manager, but right. there's going to be no help. 
Number eight, you won't get rich quick. No? I, is that a racket? I, I No, I mean, I, I what, 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 what's rich to you may not may be rich to somebody else. Yeah, that, that what, is. And what does quick mean? Like one year, two years, five years? Because I think getting years? rich in 10 years is quick. Yeah, but you, and that can certainly happen. Uh, yeah, I think it's all perspective, right? For 10 sure. years is a short period of time. You can get rich in 10 years. Well, whatever rich what is, racket. I mean, that is, a, that is a little bit of a racket. Number nine, the highest bidder doesn't always get the deal. Does that mean money-wise? That means so they're not talking about the... Even if you are rich or have enough money to buy the property, it doesn't mean you'll get it. So there, there are agents that are confused. They bring an offer to the table. It's the highest offer. Right. And they didn't get the offer. Dude, you didn't have the best terms. You don't know how to negotiate right. to position you that offer. You don't have the best contract. I mean, it's really, it all boils down to the best looking contract. You're not the best sure. negotiator. You didn't you didn't put the best terms. You didn't have the best relationship with the agent, hmm. with the listing agent. That is actually That's 100% kind of true. Because there's going to be a listing agent. Listen, I do this all the time. Hey, listen, I've worked with this uh, buyer's agent seven times in the past. I've never heard of the other one. I know they're both qualified, but I know this person closes a lot of homes. I looked up this other one. They haven't closed one. Yeah. These are just facts that I'm pointing out to the seller, right. and they're making a decision off of that. Hmm. Just factoids. 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 It's like nuggets. Nuggets. Uh, number factoids. 10, you need to block out the noise as a new agent. Do you need to block out the noise? Well, so what is it saying? Block out the noise. Block out the, the noise. New shiny objects or tools. Well, that's, you know, what's really interesting is that I feel like this one's sort of contradicting the other one about knowing all that you don't know because it's talking about blocking out all the shiny. Because well, oh. these are 13 different people. So everyone's given yeah. their number one bunch thing. Of, bunch of baloney. So well, I think that. Well, I don't I think this is the same. Well, no, the other one is, is, is. It's talking about all the shiny things. Yeah, I do think you need to. And, and no, this is 100% true. To improve your true. business. Because here's what. Vendors what, try to sell you what right. will improve. I think, I think that's partially, partially, a, I would give it a half of a racket. No, new agents all the time. I, I mean, I've told our new agents, you shouldn't even lift your head up from prospecting for 24 months. The next day they'll come in and be like, hey, um, thinking about taking like a half a day tomorrow to start a vlog. What do you think of that? <laughs> I think if it's in the flow of you prospecting, no, we wanted to talk about, um, something too, super technical so that you know that's why i'm researching for it and i'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it no, no no just vlog on the prospecting because you're not supposed to lift your head up for 24 months right. of prospecting so i do think you should vlog i do think you should post on ig hmm. i do think you should post every day on facebook and it should be about your journey of the prospecting right and of generating leads yeah i do think though that there are some certain things like because when i got into the business uh we didn't have smartphones and i remember my manager's like nicole you'll <sighs> never need a smartphone i've always had a smartphone in this business i i never i didn't i yeah. um i think i started with like i think i got like a blackberry just because i really Needed. New agents, imagine how Email. old this lady is that I do this show with. She didn't even have Shut a smartphone when she started this business. She just, and she's like, it's a waste of your money, but that's one of those things that like I didn't listen to, and I'm glad that I didn't because like to have email instantly coming. Th so I mean, just I to be clear, smartphones existed when you were in the start of the business. Oh, they were just actually there. Yeah, I mean, BlackBerry literally, but like it was, I feel like you didn't really get internet access very well from your BlackBerry. Yeah. It was, uh, it was all whatever. All right, we get, we got a roll here. We're Sorry. Going along. All right, so we're almost um, done. Thirteen. Eleven. We're on 12. Actively work to generate leads every single day. You love it. That is the furthest thing from a racket. That's what you should be doing as a new agent for at least two two years straight. Uh, and actually, I think you probably think that that one probably trumps then relationships because you like you have to you can't rely just yeah. solely on your relationships because there's going to be aunts, uncles that are just not going to want to use you no, regardless. You're right about that. Actually, and your friends aren't going to want to use you because they want to be able to bitch at somebody. I will so, say that this trumps the relationships. Relationships will ultimately be the thing that matters for your career. Right. But when you're starting out to Nicole's point, your relationships aren't even going to believe in you and you need to block that noise. For out. sure. Uh, number 12, you'll spend most of your time on acquisition, which is the same thing as number 11. You will spend all your time generating leads mm -hmm. and figuring out how to acquire customers and clients. Yeah, especially even just going to open houses. I feel like, I think I told you guys that I have like a stack. 13 is not a racket. It's something many people will look over until they get burned. Mm -hmm. Document everything as a new agent. Absolutely everything. You want to be super organized and you want to keep a record of text message conversations. If, if something is pertinent to the deal, I, I've often screenshotted, emailed myself, and then I put it into the uh, email folder of the appropriate transaction. You wanna be very 
very relentless mm -hmm. in how you document and track not only the transactions, but everything you're doing so you can learn from it too. For sure. Oh, wow. shell. Jeez. Wow. But is that can we get a word count on that episode? A word count? How well, many you, words you, a word? you still, I mean, you're Did pretty I great. Did I get any words in? You, I'm sorry. Did you get any words in? <laughs> uh, what? All right. Hmm. We'd love uh, any of your tips for new agents. Drop those in the comments. And uh, what's one thing that's worked for you in your business when you started out? Hmm, that's a good question. All right. Hmm. Keep it real out there. Bye. Talk to you guys next week. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real.